Hi friends, a long time ago I received a very valuable package from Alexander. In that package, almost everything is associated with welding. There are a bunch of power FEDs, diodes and even printed circuit boards for a very curious welding inverter called Contact. Contacts were produced in the Russian Federation, but as far as I understand they are no longer produced now. But according to this design, inverters are still being made. Rezanta, Telvin and many others, according to this cube bridge circuit, are assembled in almost the same way. The circuit is not bad. Such devices work perfectly even with difficult electrodes like UONI1355, moreover at low currents. Alexander sent me one fully assembled such inverter and several boards. The assembled board is on deep components. It is the old version of the contact inverter, while the empty boards are for the new version on SMD. According to the circuit, they are almost the same, but there are significant savings in the new ones. These are quite serious inverters, they can deliver up to 200 to 220 honest amps. There were different options with currents from 160 to 180 to 220 amps. In general, the boards are universal and the current is limited by power components. Yes, they are very similar to Rezanta. I will say more, this is the Chinese Rezanta or Telvin, only the actual resource in contact is different. It is built on a specialized TOP224 chip. It is a 3-pin component in a TO220 package and is actually a ready-made solution for single-ended sources. Both the PWM and the power transistor and everything else are in this small microcircuit similar to a transistor, so there are a minimum of external components. The topology of the welder is single cycle. It is a forward converter. The circuit without an auxiliary source is now in front of you. It is quite large and the components nominal can be eligible. But in the description there is an archive of the project, there you will find the circuit in high resolution. I had ready-made printed circuit boards, as I already said, they are factory-made. Boards of the same quality and in some places even much better can be made for you by the sponsor of this video, company GLCPCB. A large selection of solder mask colors, track coating and other options is provided and the company is also engaged in industrial 3D printing, creating high-precision stencils for SMD soldering and assembling boards. The highest quality is guaranteed at humane prices if you close your eyes to the cost of express delivery. The link to the company's website is in the description. I note that the inverter has an anti-sticking function, under voltage protection, overheating protection and alarm indication. The current feedback is connected to the primary circuit through a current transformer. The power inverter is built on IGBT switches, their build-up is done on opto drivers. The control board is separate, mounted vertically to the power board. Input is at the top left. Nothing unusual, mains power through a filter, which is absent on my board. Goes to a bridge rectifier and smoothly charges the input electrolytes through a soft start resistor. When a certain voltage is reached on them, an auxiliary source will work. Next comes the delay in the operation of the relay. There is a separate note for this and only after a delay of 1 to 1.5 seconds the relay is activated. Its contacts close and all power goes through the closed relay contacts. Further, according to the classes of the genre, we have a powerful rectifier bridge and smoothing power capacitors. Rectified and smooth power is supplied to a power inverter built on IGBT. The control system consists of a PWM controller, and other things according to the circuit on the right. A single-ended PWM for the UC family is used here. The build-up of transistors is organized through an optodriver. It is worth noting that the inverter has protection against low mains power. The control system probes mains through a resistive divider, and if everything is fine, it gives a permissive signal to the PWM. This and other monitoring options are released with a 4-channel operational amplifier. In the presence of control pulses at the output of the optodrivers, all power switches open. There are four of them, each pair is connected in parallel. When worked, the transistors switch power to the primary winding of the transformer. As a result, voltage is inducted on the secondary windings of the same transformer. The inverter starts. In the absence of a pulse, the switching transistors are closed. 
The residual energy of the transformer is extinguished through the so-called demagnetizing diodes, which are installed in the opposite direction. Although the word extinguished isn't entirely appropriate here, because this energy returns to the system in recharging the input capacitors. With a forward stroke, the current from the transformer goes through direct diodes to the welding electrode. When there are no control pulses, that is, the transistors are closed, the current is maintained solely by the energy stored in the inductor. This current through the reverse or shorting diodes is supplied to the load. Moreover, reverse diodes must have a larger rated current and in general be able to dissipate more power, since in the absence of a pulse the current continues longer than in a forward stroke. There is a lot of controversy on the internet whether a welding inverter needs a choke. So, in a single cycle forward converter it is not just a useful option, but directly takes part in the work and is the most important part of the power inverter. Let's go further. The output voltage from the inverter through the resistor, terminal switch and the diode charges the specified capacitor. As soon as the voltage on it reaches the threshold of the LED of optocoupler, it will light up. When the electrode sticks, the output voltage will decrease sharply. The autocoupler LED will go out. The specified circuit having seen this with a short delay will give the command to the control system to reset the current so as not to heat the electrode. The same thing happens if the terminal switch trips. An important role in this circuit is played by a storage capacitor, because after sticking, the control system will work after a short delay. This delay is provided by the specified capacitors, temporarily feeding the autocoupler LED, thereby giving time to ignite the electrode. The larger is its capacity, the longer the protection response delay time. Adjustment of the welding current is organized through a current transformer in the primary circuit. This method has the right to leave but doesn't allow you to control the current with high accuracy, as for example in the case of an output shunt. Also, this device does not have the protection against short circuits. For example, open circuits in the feedback circuit will most likely lead to the death of the inverter power transistors. The output rectifier is built on powerful diode assemblies with a common cathode. There are 7 seats on my board, 3 for direct diodes and 4 for closing ones. This topology has its own nuances and disadvantages. For example, poor performance due to reducted power supply, which is probably why there is protection against reducted mains. Among the disadvantages are high currents through switching transistors, hard switching mode and the possibility of remagnetization of the core, but in implementation forward converters are cheaper and simpler compared to the same bridge circuits. I would be happy to explain the detailed operation of the control system, what the OP amp does in certain cases, what voltages compares and how it regulates the PWM, but I'm too lazy to draw and mount it all. Transformers In the device we have three transformers, power, current and auxiliary source transformer. The current transformer is here precisely to control the output current, and this decision is very controversial. In good devices, as a rule, current protection is built on its basis, and the current stabilization system itself is tied through an output shunt which is absent in this device. The shunt solution provides more precise current control. In this case, the current transformer is wound on a toroidal core, the parameters of which are now in front of you. Secondary winding consists of 170 turns with 0.15 mm wire. Then, I fill this winding with epoxy. Primary winding has one turn of wire with a cross section of 2.5 square millimeters. Power transformer. The core is W-shaped EE70 of colossal dimensions. Between its halves there is an optional gap of 0.1 mm made by masking tape glued to the cores. The primary winding is wound with a lead wire. Wire diameter is 0.24 mm. The number of cores is 100 and the cross section is about 4.5 square millimeters. The number of turns of the primary winding is 12. This winding is insulated with several layers of captain tape and such paper. I don't know what it is called, but the Chinese often use it as an insulation. Leads wire is additionally insulated with captain tape. The secondary winding is also wound with a copper leads wire. The total number of wires of the leads wire is 180. The diameter of each wire is 0.35 mm, and the cross section is about 17 square millimeters. 
The number of turns of the secondary winding is only 4. The finished transformer is assembled, the hulls are pulled together with captain tape and it is also desirable to glue them. Next is the auxiliary source transformer. Full characteristics and winding data are now in front of you. Here it is worth pointing out that this transformer generates 3 secondary voltages, 2 times 24 volts to power the opto drivers and 12 to 15 to power the control circuit, relay and fans. The primary winding is divided into two parts. After the winding of each part, insulation was placed. The topology of the converter in which this transformer or rather a multi-winding choke operates is flyback, so there is a gap between the halves of the core which must be calculated. In general, this source is quite powerful. It can provide about 30 to 40 watts. Components In that package there were a lot of power IGBTs, 30 amps, 600 volts. They aren't quite original, but the crystals of many of them cannot be distinguished from the original. In general, they are good. I inserted 4 such transistors and this is enough for currents of 140 to 160 amps. Radiators for them are huge, so everything is good with cooling. The lower part of the radiators was insulated with several layers of captain in order to avoid accidental shots on the board because the transistor substrates aren't insulated from the heat sinks. The power diodes of the output rectifier STT8603 are also not entirely original. Each diode will pass 30 amps without problems. On the board we have seats for 3 forward and 4 reverse diodes. I installed all 7 pieces. On my board there are 3 input capacitors, 470 microfarads each, 400 volts, bridge KBPC5010, relay for 30 amps. In general everything is like in most average good inverters. Design I've been reinsured everywhere, the pins of the power transistors are in heat shrink. Everything that is needed is insulated with captain and other insulating material. Components which are under vibration are glued, high current tracks reinforced and tinned. In the end, the board was coated on both sides with a triple layer of a special protective varnish for printed circuit boards. Then came the tests and there were a lot of them. All options on all declared functions, minimum and maximum current, work with different electrodes at different currents and much more were checked. The device showed itself from the best side. Despite the not quite original power components used in it, nothing wrong happened. It welds very, very softly even at low currents. There are no problems with ignition. As for the ignition, it is better here than in a half-bridge inverter I copied. The anti-sticking function works properly. When this option is triggered, the output current is reset to several tens of amperes and the electrode doesn't heat up. The minimum output current of the device is 15 to 20 amps. The maximum current that it gave out on the ballast was about 120 amps. On a real arc, the current is about 140 amps. This restriction was made by me, although it's possible about 160 even taking into account fake components. We can set the current limit by the specified regulator. The device works stably with electrodes of 3 and 4 mm. I also like the fact that there are fewer spatters during welding than in the case of my other homemade devices. Well, in the end, the operation of the apparatus with different electrodes. I'll do the welding, but I'm not a welder. Well, in general, you understand, the quality of the seams will be bad. And by the way, I haven't yet made a case and there are no cooling fans.
You'll agree it works decently. I have it fully assembled and it has been idle for several months. It remains only to find or make housing and I can safely put it in the collection with my other inverters. It makes no sense to sell because the components are more expensive than the store-bought inverters, but mine is made with love. That's all today, let me remind you that all the necessary links including links to my other resources you will find in the description. Now I say goodbye until next time, with you, as always, was Kassian TV.